can sea monsters exist, scientifically speaking. Every year we find dozens of new marine species, so who's to say that there aren't bigger things we don't know about lurking deep in the darkness? Since I said that the Megalodon is almost certainly extinct in my reaction to the movie The Meg, like four or five years ago, I once in a while receive angry emails or comments about how the Megalodon still exists, that I don't know what I'm talking about, and that I'm dumb. I mean, just go look at the comment section of that video. As a well-behaved science child, I started questioning. Okay. So how sure am I that the Meg actually does not exist anymore? What is the evidence or lack thereof for that? Could I just be mistaken? Well, no. I'm pretty confident that the Megalodon does not exist anymore, as are all the scientists who have any say in the matter. And that is for reasons we will discuss later. But what about so-called sea monsters? Today let's take a look at what we know what we don't know, and whether I should actually worry more about unknown deep sea visitors during my beach holidays. For as long as humans have sailed the seas, we've told stories of the creatures lurking beneath the waves. Ancient sailors, merchants, and explorers from around the world spoke of massive, otherworldly beasts rising from the depths long, serpentine bodies slithering through the water, colossal tentacles dragging ships under, and bizarre remains washing up on shore. But were they really seeing monsters or just something unfamiliar? As our understanding of marine life has grown, we've realized that many of the so-called sea monsters were likely misidentified real animals we know of today. Mermaids? Probably manatees and dugongs. Sea serpents? Most likely. Or fish. Giant squids actually exist, but they're not this ship-destroying nightmares of legend. And the word monster always carried an air of fear and mystery, but in reality these animals are just as natural as any others. While natural doesn't mean harmless, I think sometimes our fear of deep sea animals is disproportionate to the actual threat they pose to humans. There are no official or verified reports of people being killed by large deep sea animals, like giant squids or fish, giant crabs, and so on. Even though there are some intriguing accounts, these are all unverified stories. The truth is, encounters with titan-sized animals from the deep are extremely rare. Even the legendary giant squid, which can grow up to 12 meters long, was a complete enigma until very recently. We knew it existed because of washed up carcasses and beaks found in the stomach of sperm whales, but the first ever live photograph of one in its natural habitat wasn't taken until 2005. And video? That didn't happen until 2012. Let me be clear, I don't think I would feel comfortable swimming with Mr. Long Tentacles, but they don't go around terrorizing sailors either. In fact, when any of these animals is seen at the surface, they are usually not in a very good shape. They're either sick, dying, or dead. That's why I don't like the word monsters. While I was researching for this video, I came across an actual research article that included the movies Deep Blue Sea and The Meg in the title. So of course, I immediately checked it out. Basically, this article analyzes the films The Meg and The Deep Blue Sea through an eco-gothic lens which means a mix of ecological themes and gothic horror. It argues that these movies tap into our ancient fear of the unknown while also reflecting real-world concerns about humanity's attempt to control nature. The ocean in these stories isn't just a setting, it's an unpredictable, untamed force, both beautiful and terrifying kind of highlighting a lot of our feelings towards the deep sea as well. And of course, the terrifying normally is taking the form of a giant ultra-intelligent shark. It's always sharks. What has this cute dude ever done to humanity? Look at it, it's cute. Jokes aside, I do think that this combination of fear and fascination is also why we so easily imagine terrifying super predators like giant sharks lurking below, despite the lack of evidence for their existence most of the time. We interrupt our regular programming to review the question, is the megalodon extinct? The megalodon was a large surface shark that ate a lot and was adapted to warm surface waters. If it still existed today, it would most likely have already been sighted or left marks behind, like bite marks. It hasn't. Megalodon teeth are huge and sharks shed thousands of teeth in their lifetime. If megalodons were still out there, we'd be finding teeth left and right. We aren't. 
there is absolutely no evidence whatsoever anywhere that this is a species that still exists. Yes, okay, we also thought that the coelacanth was extinct, and no, it wasn't. That is a good point, but there are some key differences between the two species. The coelacanth lives in underwater caves, and we humans don't go there much. Megalodons lived in surface waters. We do go there much, and that is a key difference. Now back to our regular programming. The reality is that whether our feelings towards the deep sea are overblown or not, there really is a lot we don't know. You've probably heard the claim that only 5% of the ocean has been explored. This statistic is actually misleading and meaningless. If you want to know the real story, check out the video right here. But here is a number that blows my mind. Scientists have estimated that there are between 1 and 2 million marine species, but we've only officially described around 250,000. If these numbers are correct, that means that up to 90% of ocean life is still undiscovered. 90%. Last year alone, scientists discovered over 2,000 new marine species. You can check all of them out on the WORMS, or the World Register of Marine Species. Most of them are medium to small-sized animals, which makes sense since smaller creatures are harder to spot. But some aren't that small. In fact, just two years ago, researchers identified an entire new species of whale. A whale. So, you know, maybe the case for the existence of Cthulhu is not that crazy after all. If we look at the majority of species discovered and described in the past years, they were mostly small to middle-sized. So it's easy to assume that there aren't that many large animals out there to be discovered. But there is an argument to be made that we might be exploring the deep sea wrong. Until recently, deep sea exploration mostly meant sending submarines and cameras down blasting bright lights into the darkness and hoping to catch something on video. That's how we've documented a lot of already known deep sea species. But it's also likely why some creatures like the giant squid remained elusive for so long. I mean, think about it. If you're a deep sea animal, living your entire life in total darkness, the only light you ever see is from bioluminescent creatures swimming around you, and then suddenly, Boom! Some giant metal alien shows up, flooding the place with some harsh artificial light. Your instinct is probably to get out of there. In fact, NOAA researchers realized that this might be a major flaw in their approach to research, researching the deep sea. So they decided to do something different, or to try something different. They took inspiration from land-based research techniques. For example, how infrared cameras are used to observe elusive animals without disturbing them. But since infrared doesn't work well underwater, they had to get creative. Enter the spotlight fish, a deep sea species that uses red light to navigate and communicate in the dark, where most animals can't see red at all. Inspired by this, the scientists developed a new deep-sea camera system called Medusa, filtering its lights to mimic natural deep-sea wavelengths instead of blinding everything with artificial glare. And it worked. During its first test, when they turned on the imitation jellyfish display, an almost two meters long squid showed up within moments. The second giant squid to have ever been caught on video. This could have been a lucky coincidence, but the fact that the squid even interacted with the object, plus the fact that there have been more sightings, suggests that it might not have been a coincidence. Regardless, rethinking how we explore the deep ocean could reveal beings that we've been missing this whole time. There's one thing we know for sure. The deep sea is a hotspot for big. And I mean big. (laughs) Just look at this. From giant squids to massive isopods, some of the largest marine animals live in the depths. But there is a limit. Most of these giants thrive above 3,000 meters deep. The deepest point in the ocean is 12,000 meters. That's like 9,000 meters difference. And there are reasons for why they probably don't go deeper. One, pressure. 
The deepest any fish has ever been spotted was 8,000 meters. And these fish have some fascinating adaptations to pressure, which one would need. Like, for example, squishy and not so large bodies. But there are more reasons for why fish don't go deeper. This phenomenon, known as deep sea gigantism, happens due to several factors. Cold temperatures, that slow metabolism allowing animals to grow larger over longer lifespans. Higher oxygen levels in some deep regions help support bigger bodies. And fewer predators means some species can afford to get bigger without being eaten first. But on the flip side, food is scarce. And the deeper you go, the harder it is to find enough to sustain a massive body. Large animals like the giant squid have adapted to deep sea life, but even they don't stray too deep. Because while they can store large amounts of energy in their large bodies for less fortunate times, they still eventually need to eat. And they often come a bit closer to the surface to feed on smaller animals that reside in surface, more surface waters. So yes, gigantism is a thing, but there are limits to how big and how deep it goes. Bottom line, animals, especially predatory ones with high energy demands, are unlikely to survive much deeper than about three to four kilometers. This idea of massive predators lurking deeper in the abyssal zones, like the Mariana Trench, for example, is probably more science fiction than science reality. Now, given these limits, let's consider the idea of an undiscovered giant predatory sea creature, something on the scale of a megalodon living in the Mariana Trench or a kraken. Here is what such a creature would need to exist. 1. A stable food source. Huge predators eat a lot. And the bigger, more active aggressive you are, the more you need to eat. So it would probably not manage to live super deep without coming closer to the surface. Where? Point. Two. It would have to had avoided detection. Modern sonar, deep sea trawling and submersibles have scanned quite a lot of the deep sea. Hiding forever isn't easy, especially above 3000 meters. So it would have had to find a way to do that. Sneaky one. Probably we would expect some kind of physical evidence. Large predators leave behind bite marks, carcasses, shed teeth, other parts we don't know of maybe. <laughs> if a megalodon-sized creature were still out there, we'd expect to find some trace of it. Looking at these things together, it renders the probability of a giant predatory species still existing, hiding, lurking in the dark, not super high. But with that said, just two years ago, as I said, scientists identified a new species of whale. It probably had already been seen, just not identified as a different species. You know, I mean, for most people, it's just another whale. And not so long ago, we discovered the longest animal ever, a siphonophore. These discoveries remind us that the ocean still holds surprises. And could there be another massive creature? Possibly, but if so, it's likely something that fits within the known rules of biology rather than a legendary ultra aggressive sea monster. So I, I'm not gonna sit here uh, and say, no, it's absolutely impossible for an unknown big animal to exist in the deep. But if it does exist, it probably prefers the deep, dark abyss over the well-lit, tourist-filled waters of the surface. I know that this may be, probably not, but we don't know sort of answer is not really satisfying. But as with most things, we can't know what we don't know. We can only look at the evidence and probabilities. So if there is a mysterious giant lurking below, it's keeping to itself. Which means, I think, you can enjoy your beach swim without worrying about a deep sea horror jump scaring you, or should I say, swim scaring you? <laughs> no.